You already know exactly what this bin means. That's right, it's time for another empties video. I feel like I normally have quite a few makeup empties, but this time around I only have two, and then the rest of my bin is filled with skincare, hair care, makeup, no, I just said only two makeup items. Skincare, hair care, and body care, okay? And then I just have two makeup empties, which are actually both mascara related. So the first of the two is the Lancome. Um, is it Sills? Is it C-I-L-S? Neither of those feel right. Booster XL Lash Primer, and I think they sent this to me in PR over a year ago, and I just kind of left it sitting off to the side, like, eh, I'll probably give it away. I feel like I don't need it, but one day just decided to try it on a whim. I'm so glad that I did because I feel like I just completely forgot about the power of an amazing mascara or eyelash primer. I feel like this just takes my lashes to the next level. Like length, volume, everything looks so much better with this lash primer on. I'm so bummed that I ran out because I didn't get to put it on today and I, and I huge, I was gonna say I huge a notice difference. I had a very long weekend. I'm tired. I'm a bit slower today, so stick with me. I notice a huge difference in my lashes without this primer on, so I need to repurchase immediately. I'm trying to think. I feel like I actually did buy a couple other primers to test out. Let me know in the comments below if there's any sort of mascara primer that you want me to test and review. I could definitely do that. If you maybe want me to do a lash primer showdown, I could do that as well, because I am just very into a good lash primer right now, and the Lancome one is no exception. So highly recommend if you are on the lookout. Okay, unfortunately this one is a different story because I hated it. This is the CoverGirl Lash Blast Clean Topia Mascara and I actually first used this in a drugstore skincare and makeup try on. It was like a get ready with me. We were just chatting about life and I was trying new skincare and makeup for the first time on camera. This is the mascara that I tried in that video. I'll show you the wand up close here. And yeah, I hated it. The texture of this mascara is just way too sticky. I found it really difficult to work with. And it's one of those mascaras that needs to be built because with just one coat, you don't really get enough of anything. You don't get enough length, volume, separation. So you want to build it to add those things. But because it was so sticky, when I did try to build, my lashes just stuck and clumped together. It was terrible. So I do not recommend this whatsoever. I think that there are so many incredible mascaras at the drugstore, but this is not one of them. All right, we are gonna move on to skincare, but start off with lip care first. I have two different products that I wanna talk about, and the purchase of both of these was actually inspired by State of Kate here on YouTube. I know I recommended her lip balm video in another video of mine, but I don't remember when that was or like what video that was in, so I'll just mention it again here quick. She posted a video where she reviewed, I think, over like 50 different lip balms, treatments, masks, like anything in the lip care category, really. And the video is incredible. She does such an amazing job at like really deep diving product texture and feel and just like all the aspects you would want to know about a product. She's actually my current favorite makeup YouTuber because I feel like nobody else really does videos like that anymore. There's just such a heavy focus on like testing out a new viral product and then immediately moving on to the next. But the type of content that she posts is just such a nice breath of fresh air because it's like opposite of that where it's just focused on the reviews and the product and how they actually perform. So I'll definitely list that video of hers below. Make sure to go subscribe to her and tell her I sent ya. But these were two products that she really loved so I wanted to try them both. The first is the Dionys, I don't know how to pronounce this, classic, Goat Butter Lip Mask. And this, ooh, I was gonna squeeze it out to show you but it's empty, I can't do that. Well. I got a little out, you guys. Oh my gosh. Can you see? Can you see? This is a very, very thick lip mask, which if you know, you know, that is my favorite kind of lip product. And this has so many nourishing ingredients for the lips, including shea butter, soybean oil, jojoba seed oil, olive oil, goat milk, raspberry seed oil, moringa seed oil, Pequi fruit oil, pecky, what the hecky, and grapeseed oil. But despite this having a ton of different oils in it, it doesn't feel like a lip oil at all. Like I was saying, it's quite thick and it's a little bit tacky. So it just has that consistency that like stays put on your lips and doesn't slip and slide like an oil would. I think this does an amazing job at creating that occlusive layer on top of my lips. I just am not sure if this like sinks in enough for me. I was talking about this in a recent video where I feel like there's a perfect balance or like a perfect lip product for me has a perfect balance between creating that film, that occlusive layer on the lips, but then at the same time, 
having that feeling of like sinking in and really moisturizing your lips. And this one, I was feeling like a lot of the times when I used it, I didn't get that like sinking in moisturizing feel as much as I did the occlusive layer. Does that make sense? But with that being said, after I emptied this and kind of started playing around with other lip products, I found myself missing this and I wanted to reach for it. So I just repurchased it. I'll let you guys know after I use that one up if I have the same feeling about it. Like, you know what? I just need something that sinks in a little bit better, but either way, I think it's worth a shot because it's affordable and it feels incredible. Like, oh my gosh, it feels great. This right here is something that I did not fully use up because unfortunately it didn't work for me. It is the K-Skin Deep Water Nourishing Lip Mask. This has ingredients like shea butter, sunflower seed oil, aloe, calendula extract, castor oil, hyal <laughs> castor oil, hyaluronic acid, and panthenol. And you will be able to see the texture of this because again, I did not fully use it up. It is very, very thick, which again, I love. It's like thick and melty. This one smells amazing too. Oh my God. It's like vanilla sugar. Which reminds me, I forgot to mention the smell for this one. I do get a hint of like vanilla sweetness in this as well but it's not nearly as potent as something like this. Like, I feel like I can smell this more just like on the tube than I actually could when I was applying it on my lips. When I was applying it, I feel like I wasn't really getting like a ton of a smell. With this one you do though, which could either be a good or a bad thing for you. The thing about this mask that doesn't work for me is like an unfortunate side effect because the texture is great, the smell's great. Like nothing is wrong in that sense. I love how it feels. Initially, it's very nice and nourishing. However, there must be something in here that that I'm either allergic or sensitive to because my lips start to get really tingly and I actually can like kind of feel it in the back of my throat a little. Like there's some sort of reaction happening that's not super pleasant. You know what? Does this have lanolin in it? I'm gonna look that up really quick because I am in fact allergic to lanolin. So that would explain that if it is. He's old. Not seeing that. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but unfortunately because of that, this isn't something that I am going to continue to use, but I'm sure the majority of you would not have that issue. So definitely still worth a shot if the way I described it sounds like it would be right up your alley. Moving on to facial skincare, we have the CeraVe Makeup Removing Cleanser Balm, which contains ceramides, cholesterol, and jojoba oil. I don't have any issues with this cleansing balm. I think that it works well. It removes all of the makeup I need it to, including my eye makeup. It feels nice enough. There's nothing about it that I actively dislike. I just think that it's not worth the price. This is is such a little small tub. You only get 1.3 ounces of product in it and it retails for 12 to 13.99, which I just think is too much for the other kinds of products that you can get at the drugstore that actually feel better than this and are cheaper for more product. And I would spend that money on this if I felt like it was amazing and just like the texture was so nice and I was so excited to reach for it, but I feel like it just was kind of like good, average, nothing incredible. And so for that reason, I will not repurchase. Another cleansing balm that I emptied that I definitely liked better than that one from CeraVe is the Naturium Purple Ginseng Cleansing Balm. This one has three ounces of product in it and retails for $20. So this is like $6.66 an ounce, whereas the CeraVe one is $10.76 an ounce. This contains chia seed oil, jojoba seed oil, ginseng extract, which of course is in the title of the product and several other plant extracts as well. This I just found to feel elevated compared to CeraVe. I think that it has like more of a lightweight, slippery texture. CeraVe is one where at first it has that kind of like hard solid oil texture that you have to break down and melt. This one right away just feels very soft. So I would definitely recommend this over CeraVe if you're looking to pick something up from the drugstore, but compared to my all-time favorite cleansing balm from Geek and Gorgeous, which is their Mighty Melt Cleansing Balm, I do still prefer that one. There's just, that's something special about it that I don't quite get with this. But again, I still think that this is great. Okay, cleanser time. This is the Haru Haru Wonder Black Rice Moisture Soft Cleansing Gel. And this one has glycerin, rice extract, ginseng extract, and beta glucan. I thought that I had found a new favorite cleanser in this when I first tried it out because the texture is so, so nice. It's a gel that feels super hydrating. It's almost like fluffy in texture, which I know doesn't make a lot of sense because I'm describing a cleanser, but like also, I feel like if you're into skincare, you know what I'm talking about. It just feels super nice on the skin. Of course, non-stripping, just one of those that leaves my skin feeling fresh and hydrated after I use it. But 
then the prequel cleanser came out and I was like, okay, but that is like even better. And I feel like what you would benefit from in this cleanser is the same as with prequel. Like they're the same kind of cleanser concept. It's just that I think prequel is better. It is like next level for me. This one I would say is like a notch below that. Still a beautiful cleanser, but like prequel again is next level. So it's not that I wouldn't recommend this, it's just that I would recommend prequel more. I'm still going strong with my Cetaphil cleanser. This is the Cetaphil Acne Clearing Cream Cleanser. This is something that I like to use in the morning. I will put it on in the shower, leave it on for several minutes because of the fact that it contains 2% salicylic acid. Then I will go ahead and rinse it away and I am good to go for the day. Well, obviously not. I have a lot of skincare to apply after that, but good to go to prepare myself for that skincare. Aside from the salicylic acid, this also contains aloe juice and green tea. This has a very nice creamy texture and it never leaves my skin feeling stripped or dry. That is definitely an issue that I can have with exfoliating cleansers. So I love the fact that this conditions, hydrates, calms my skin, but then also gives me that benefit of exfoliation. Love it, can't live without it. Okay. <laughs> I can explain. So I have three empties of my Dermatology Needleless Serum and three empties of my Ordinary Copper Peptide Serum. Oh my gosh, that's, that's a lot of product. I am still using these every single night. Well, I guess I should say I'm still using Dermatology every single night. The Ordinary, this is like a more recent addition to my nighttime skincare routine. So if you would like to see that routine step-by-step, step, see how I use these together and the other products that I use with them, I will list my nighttime skincare routine below. I'll just, I'll list my morning skincare routine as well. I did post those videos as like updates very recently. So if you wanna know exactly what I am doing right here in this moment for my skin, those videos are available to you. I finished up the Geek and Gorgeous Liquid Hydration Spray. This contains 5% Panthenol, natural moisturizing factors, and allantoin. I was loving using this every single morning. It's super lightweight, but very, very hydrating. Definitely something that just seems to like calm my skin, juice it up a bit, always left it feeling very hydrated. So one that I would recommend for sure. I don't know that I'm ever gonna be like super loyal to one specific spray. It's a category I enjoy kind of, enjoy? No. Enjoy kind of exploring. I guess that's how I got that. So I'm not sure what spray I'll test out next, but if you were curious about this one, I do think that it's worth it. I really loved it. This was one of my all-time favorite moisturizers this past winter. It is the Astura Ato Barrier 365 Cream. This this contains glycerin, squalane, allantoin, mannitol, and ceramides, and it is just incredibly moisturizing. What I really loved about this moisturizer for my skin, as somebody with skin that leans oily, is that this was thick enough and moisturizing enough to really give me that extra nourishment that I definitely do still need in the winter, but it didn't feel like heavy and like I was like, oh God, I got to slather on my thick barrier cream that I know is going to benefit my skin, but like doesn't really feel that pleasant. You know what I mean? Like those creams that are just so thick that they're not super fun to put on. This for me is one that was like the best of both worlds because I enjoyed applying it. The texture is really nice, but it still was thick and incredibly moisturizing for me. So a sleigh, if you will. I feel like I don't ever use trendy words like that when they're actually trendy. I just start using them ironically like years after the fact. Does anyone else do that? Slay. Next we have an eye cream from Pyeong Kang Yule. This is their black tea time reverse eye cream. So many incredible ingredients in this, including macadamia seed oil, niacinamide, shea butter, hyaluronic acid, black tea ferment, centella asiatica, ceramides, and peptides. This is still one of my all-time favorite eye creams. It's really, really, really soft and silky, but thick enough to work as a nighttime eye cream. That is how I was enjoying using this. And compared to the one that I recently purchased from... I think it's Benton. I do feel like I enjoy the texture of this better. It just has more of like a silkiness to it that I feel is nicer to apply, you know? Sometimes it's about the little things. So I'll likely repurchase this at some point, but I do feel like I need to get on it and try out a few other eye creams. So I'll come back to you, just not quite yet. All right, let, no, eh. Yeah, let's move on to hair care. Go ahead. I finished up the new L'Oreal Ever Pure Clarify Shampoo. This came out actually very, very recently, but they did send it to me early to try out, make sure that I liked it, give them feedback, and I do really enjoy this. I think that this is going to be for you if, number one, you have an oily scalp and are looking for more of just like an everyday kind of shampoo that you can use often that's not going to be stripping, 
or if you have a normal to dry scalp and you want to clarify. I don't think that this is going to be for you if you're super oily and you want like a deeply clarifying shampoo. I personally think that something like Pantene Volume and Body does a better job if you have that kind of scalp type, but in the way that I just described it, I think that it's great. This smells unreal. Like this is the best smelling shampoo at the drugstore officially. And I also am obsessed with the light blue. I think it's so cute. The main cleansing agent in this is sodium C1416 olefin sulfonate. Love to see that in a shampoo, especially from L'Oreal because this Everpure range definitely doesn't have the best, like, maybe that's not the right word. It's just not the most deep cleansing. So if you are somebody that has a super oily scalp and needs that, it's not the line that I would recommend for shampoo specifically. So I was excited to see that we finally have a deep cleansing agent in a shampoo from this range. And then this also contains citric and salicylic acid. I do have it on my list to post a video on my favorite shampoos. So stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, if you're like dying to pick up a new shampoo, you really want some help in the shampoo department, I am going to list my shampoo routine video below because I do share some recommendations in that video. Okay, this makes me laugh. If someone were to ask me what some of my absolute essential hair care products are, like staples that I constantly repurchase, here you have them. Okay, I shouldn't have picked all these up at once. We will start here. Look at all of these vials of a prey. This kind of makes me annoyed with how the product is packaged. Like, this is annoying. I would love to see this sold in a larger glass bottle, just knowing how quickly I go through these. I feel like that would just make more sense. But regardless, I am obsessed with it, so I'll deal. I am still loving using this product in my wash day prep routine. I really do feel like it's made a big difference in the softness, smoothness, and shininess of my hair. And I'm sure I've shared this in a previous video, but if you are not super familiar with a prey, it is another bond repair treatment. And for me, I have been really methodical about how I have added bond repair treatments into my routine because I didn't want to just use a bunch at once and then not really know what was benefiting me in what way. Like, I want to see a difference with one product and make sure it's effective before thinking about adding something else. So I used K18 exclusively for a couple of years. Then I added in Living Proof. And then about a year after that, no, I think longer than a year, maybe like a year and a half is when I added a prey. So I really do feel like at each step of the way, I was able to actually notice a difference in introducing each of those products. This one I feel has given me the biggest instantaneous visual difference. And my sister, who I have showed you guys on this channel before, she has been featured in my content here and there a couple of times. She she is obsessed with this product and feels like it has made the biggest difference in her hair in the same kind of way where like she notices a difference immediately. So if you would like to know which bond repair product I would recommend for that reason, a prey would be it for sure. And then of course we have an extra strength coconut miracle oil from OGX. I have two in my cupboard right now. Cupboard? Do you call, I think you would say cabinet if it's a bathroom, right? And like cupboard is strictly for kitchen. Who knows? Oh, well, I have two backups because I just, I have to always have it. Have gone through two more bottles of K18. I can't remember if I told you guys this here on YouTube yet, how I have started to use this in six consecutive washes after I get my hair colored. Cause I saw that the brand said that you should do that now. Mm. I'm feeling like I shared that in a video, but at the same time, I don't know. So in case you didn't know that, I am doing that now, which is why I do go through it more quickly than I did before when I was only using it like once every three weeks. So if I get my hair colored, I'll do that, you know, six consecutive wash retreatment. And then after that, go back to using it about once every three weeks. And Living Proof Triple Bond Complex is still something that I am using in my post-wash routine. Really loving this still, something I feel like I want to continue to use. So yeah. That's it on that. I finished up a big old tub of an Oribe mask. This is called their Mask for Beautiful Color. Oribe ingredients lists are so, so long, so I'm not gonna like try to pinpoint every single little ingredient, because who knows if there's even enough of each present to like really make it meaningful and worth mentioning, but some that are towards the top include sunflower seed oil, moringa oil, cysteine, BIS, PG, propyl, selenitriol, which I hadn't seen before. I need to do some digging and see what other products that ingredient is in, because if you are not familiar with cysteine as it relates to our hair, that is actually the main protein in our hair. So I was like, 
Interesting. Because again, I have not seen that on an ingredients list before. And then we have plant butters and just tons of other ingredients that are beneficial for our hair. This mask is definitely luxurious in feel. It really has an amazing texture. It's something that's very creamy, but not like heavy or buttery. So if you were to think of something like a Mika the Cure, I feel like that's what I always compare masks to because that is the thickest I've ever tried. This is definitely lighter weight. It doesn't have that like extra dense buttery feel which I think is really nice because I know that that doesn't work for everybody. So I really liked it, but I do feel like I see better results in using the Oribe mask. No, the Oribe Gold Lust mask. Okay, like I said, I'm tired. Gold Lust just seems to work better for my hair, make it feel softer and silkier. So if you were interested in purchasing a mask from Oribe and splurging on it, I would go for Gold Lust over this one. I don't think it's bad. I just think that like, Gold Lust is more worth the money to me. But I do wish they would put Gold Lust in a tub like this. That's my only complaint about it. Oh, <sighs> oops. Oh my God. Every time I think I'm done with this, I'll like put it in an empties drawer, it sits and then more gathers. It's like the type where it spreads and sticks on the bottle and nothing comes out when I wanna spray it. It's the product that never ends. This is the Kerastase Genesis Defense Thermique Spray. This is basically a leave-in conditioner. Does it? provide heat protection, provides anti-breakage protection and helps to provide hydration without frizz and weighing down the hair. Oh yes, protects from blow dry heat. So this is interesting because the second ingredient is coconut oil and the third ingredient is amodimethicone. Purology colored fanatic. And I think it was Alex. Yes, it was. It was Alex from Educated Mess again. I saw she commented on one of my videos. Somebody was asking my thoughts on Kerastase and Alex was saying that you can actually get very, very comparable formulas to Kerastase in much more affordable lines. So I was like, I have a feeling that this is one of those products because while I love it, I still don't love it more than Pureology Color Fanatic. And I also think that there are a lot of other products out there that give me just as good of results as this one. The thing about this that I find interesting is that it's probably the thickest and creamiest leave-in spray I've ever tried. So if you have really fine thin hair, I don't know that you will love that about this because if you wanna spray your hair evenly, I would imagine that it would just like feel a bit thicker, make you feel like you have more product in your hair. Maybe not, I'd be curious if you tried it and you have that hair type, what your thoughts are, but it's not to the point of feeling overly heavy for me, but I do prefer the lighter weight feel of both Pureology and Redken and L'Oreal and other sprays that I've mentioned loving before. So I definitely think it's a great spray. I just think you can get the same kind of thing for less. All right, let's wrap up with body care and one random tang. I fully used up the Il Maquillage 8566 Magic Moisturizing Sun Foam, which is their self-tanner. I bought both of these because I thought that this was for the face and this was for the body, but I believe they're the exact same thing, so you don't need to do that. This is a beautiful self-tanner. It really is. I did include it in a self-tan showdown, so if you would like to see what it looks like fully developed on my skin and like hear my in-depth thoughts on it compared to a bunch of other self-tanners, I will list that video below. I do really love it. I just think it is so, so expensive overpriced for the amount of product that you're getting. Like it's too much. Okay, so the bigger of the two has four ounces of product and costs $59. Come on. I'm somebody that is definitely willing to splurge on a product if it feels worth it to me. And in a sense, this does because it's probably the most natural looking self tanner I've ever used. The color is just beautiful. But to get this to be as dark as I want it to be, I have to double layer it, which means I go through it two times as fast as I would if I didn't which makes this even more expensive. Like that is insane. So even if I love the results of something, if it's that kind of situation where I'm like, oh my God, this ends up being so expensive because of the way that I need to use it to get the results that I want. And then I can compare that to so many other self tanners that still do a great job and are so much less. I'm like, I can't justify it. I can't. I can justify these cuties though. I sure can. I think I showed you guys one of these in my last empties video. It is the Tree Hut Sweet Cream Whipped Shea Butter. I purchased a bunch of these this winter because they were limited edition and true to their word, they do not exist anymore. I'm curious if they'll bring this back next winter or do something slightly different. I do love the smell of it. It's like that classic birthday cake vanilla scent that I'm obsessed with. I personally like Philosophy Fresh Cream more and the texture of that is like 
divine. So if this is something you wanted to get your hands on but can't now, go for Philosophy Fresh Cream. Or if you wanna keep the price point lower, then go with Tree Hut but use their Tropic Glow Scent. Definitely something that's a bit more tropical than this, but still so good. And the texture of these body butters <laughs> doesn't get better. And last but not least for this video, we have the Sol de Janeiro Brazilian Touch Hand Cream. This has the classic, amazing Sol de Janeiro fragrance that I am obsessed with. It's not the most like amazing, nourishing, long-lasting, moisturizing, talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same, totally unique, completely not ever been done before. Hand cream I've ever used. I have definitely tried better, but I just love the smell of it so much. So I think what I might do in the future is like mix it with an unscented hand cream and then get the best of both worlds, you know? It still is a nice hand cream, don't get me wrong. It's just not one of those that you're gonna wanna reach for in the depths of a Minnesota winter. I'll say that. Good summer hand cream. All right, those are all the empties that I wanted to share for today's video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this and I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Have you tried any of these products? Are you inspired to try any or avoid any after watching this video? If you do wanna pick something up, everything is going to be listed and linked in my description box below in order of mention as always. And if you did enjoy this video and would like to see more from me, please don't forget to give this a thumbs up, subscribe, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so, so much for your support in doing those things. Thank you for watching my videos. I love the freaking heck out of you guys. Make sure to stay tuned for my next one because that will be up in a few days. But until then, I hope you have a great few days. I just filmed my outro and almost forgot my miscellaneous tang. This is the way dead cool melrose place detergent <sighs> divine just try it thank me later